before an artist places their brush to canvas, they must first edit their composition to fit on the plane before them. Richard Termis has been a painter for over 50 years. In the late 60s, he decided that the narrow scope that can occupy a flat canvas didn't fit his artistic vision. So he adapted and became more well-rounded. And I didn't start painting on the sphere until 68, 69. And that was, uh, what led me to that was studying perspective and trying to advance it so that instead of just having a small little painting, I wanted the whole panoramic, but I wanted the panoramic around and up over the top too. When a thermosphere is observed, it's difficult to wrap one's mind around what exactly you're looking at. How did Termis manage to form a scene around the face of a ball? To hear it explained, it almost seems easy. <laughs> Imagine you're standing in the middle of a junction in a road, and then you look to the north and you see the road going off to vanishing point. That's one point. If you turn around and look at the same road, it goes off to a vanishing point on the horizon behind you. That's two different points. Then the same road that is crossed by another road going east and west. So there's four points. A telephone pole that's running down the uh, edge of the road. If you follow where it goes, it actually projects to a point above your head and a point below your feet. All of them do. All the way around you, so there's five and six point perspective. That's basically all there is to it. Except you do it on the outside of a sphere and you have to imagine you're inside the sphere. Piece of cake. But to the onlooker, it is so much more. Michael Pangburn, director of the South Dakota Arts Council, has known Termis since college and has spent some time contemplating his work. I think that one of the things that Dick has done is he has, he has been able to combine this language of art and the language of math and, and make it mean something much bigger than either of those two things separately could be. If you look at a termosphere, it really isn't possible to find the beginning or the end of where the where the, the work starts and where it ends. And it's sort of like the whole these whole dimensions of time and space that collapse on each other. I don't really understand completely th his six point perspective and all of the math formula behind it. But I really do think that the philosophy, that the knowledge that that sphere is based on really can tell us things about things much, much larger than that work itself. Richard Termis studied art education at Black Hill State and later pursued advanced degrees in LA. Galleries on either coast could offer a market for Termis' work, but he says he is most happy in the hills where he grew up, so he came home. The reason I came back here is this is home. You know, this is where I feel the best and I don't like city life. I like the country life and, and uh, this has just been perfect out here. You know, so we built the gallery thinking, well, we're halfway between Los Angeles and New York. So it's a pretty good spot. That inspiration is on display in each of his groundbreaking pieces and it's what drives the exploration of new ideas. I love optical illusions and how things never are quite what you think they are. Surrealistic stuff. I love to see what's inside my head that I don't understand how it, where it comes from. That kind of stuff excites me. I was really trained to be a modern artist and so doing realism was not something that I thought I should do or could do. When I started to see what the perspective could do with the realism, I thought, wow, I should try some of that. And it just, you know, it, it was harder because you have to think really differently when you're looking at a scene and then trying to apply it here, what you're seeing out here around you, you know, and then how do you turn and see the environment and what do you do with the ball to keep up with that, you know? So it, it, it is quite difficult. It's a process that Termis has been exploring largely on his own, but he does take time to share his method with students of all ages in workshops. A native of South Dakota, he contributes much to the artistic landscape. Dick Termis is a 2014 inductee into the South Dakota Hall of Fame. You know, the South Dakota Arts Council was established in 1966. Prior to that, there wasn't a state arts agency, and that 
And state arts agencies all around the nation sort of sprang up when the National Endowment for the Arts was established. And Dick has been in, involved in that whole South Dakota Arts Council um, public art movement almost from the beginning. I mean, I think that Dick has spent his whole career giving back to South Dakota, but I think if you'll talk to Dick, he probably feels that he's gotten a lot from the state and he's really looking for ways to give back to the, a state that has really supported him. I've lived here all my life. I don't think I ever expected to, to get an honor from South Dakota itself. You know, I, I live here and I love South Dakota and love the Black Hills, but I'm not like a South Dakota painter. I don't, very few, maybe four or five pieces I've done over the years that have to do with the environment here. Like I've, over the years, I've told people, I get a lot of credit from the math, mathematicians. They really love my work. And I say, you know, I just want somebody to like me. If it happens to be mathematicians, cool. <laughs> and now the arts world too is coming along pretty good also. And, but to have South Dakota give you an honor, that get, that's another whole kind of level, which is very, very cool. When I first met Dick, he was teaching at Black Hill State University and he was still paint, painting on flat canvases. And so my earliest memories of, of him are not actually so much as an artist, but as a teacher and how warm and approachable he was and just what a, what a decent human being he is. And I think that's reflected in his artwork too. Um, so it's, it's been fun for me to, just to watch that whole, his whole concept grow over the years. Much like his canvas, the possibilities are endless. Artists have been creating illustrations on flat surfaces for thousands of years. And the difference between spherical geometry and flat geometry is like immense. To me, it's, it's almost like we could spend 2,000 years painting on spheres to get the amount of stuff that we've done on the flat. Termis has only been painting on the sphere for a few decades, so his work has just begun.